We are back here on TATV. We do apologize for technical difficulties. Again, the internet here is tough today. We just missed a goal by Thorn Academy. Jacob Marcotte scored with a great shot from a tough angle. So 12.35 to go in the first, and Thorn Academy already leads 1-0 over the Nighthawks. The shot comes in, tipped down wide. That came in from Ryan Dumont, the senior defenseman. Now behind the net, here's Jake Florent. Exactly what Tia needed to do in the first couple of minutes there, and then Jake Marcotte, who's always putting pucks in the net, gets on the board early. Florent was looking to get through Marshwood's defense. Now behind Marshwood's net, Florent will go for a change. Skillings tries to lay the body. Now here's Baudet looking to get in, in front. And a good save there by Sumner. Wood. And Baudet looked to tip it afterwards. And he said some of the Marshwood defenders were not happy with him tapping him on the skate. Marshwood early on looks like a fiery team. They're frustrated at that goal that they gave up and they're trying to get it back as soon as possible. But TA's done a good job just controlling the puck. During that losing streak, they were turning it over too much, but they've been in control so far here in this first period and they look good offensively. And still trying to figure out some tech work right now. Here's Bodet, uh, Pecora, Skillings looking to get it towards the net. Skillings off angle and Wood was holding the post for the Nighthawks. Now here's McLean, McLean will shoot, tipped wide as Skillings was in front. Now out, here comes Marshwood. And now we've got our camera back. Here we go. Back into this game and Porter Krause will hold. And we'll use this break in the action to take a reset button. We do, again, apologize for the tech issues, but we are now up and ready to go. And if you still want to let us know where you're watching from on Facebook, you can always do that. Short crew here on TA TV, but shout out to Josh Pulsifer who's doing all the work behind the scenes. Troy Bulldog not here tonight, our great cameraman. So <laughs> we do miss Troy, who's a little under the weather. But yep. we'll have him back in the spring. Somebody watching from Midland, Georgia. for watching this broadcast. Sumner Wood goes off his pad. He will hold it as Pellerin and Lasser will come coming sliding in there. Well, if you're just joining us after our technical difficulties, Thorn Academy leads 1-0 right now over the Marshwood Nighthawks. We are only a few minutes into the first period, J Jacob Marcotte, the junior, scored for the Trojans at a tough angle, putting them up early. Here's Lasser now behind the net. Lasser trying to put it in front. Pellerin couldn't get there in time. Here's Gavin Corson. Gavin Corson trying to throw it behind the net. Now here's Gavin Pellerin going for it, and Lasser will track down in the far corner. Excuse me, there. There's a nice check on Joshua Sawyer for the Nighthawks. And now Marshwood will have it in their own zone. We do apologize for the tough angles here up at Biddeford Ice Arena, so in, when it is in the far corner, we won't really be able to see what is happening, but we'll do our best to let you know what we see. Here's Pellerin now, good tip down as he enters the zone. Pellerin looking to get through the Marshwood defender. They're trying to clear, now Lasser. It's a bouncing puck that no one can really get control of, and finally Marshwood will tip it down. Now put it in the air. There's Alonzo. Now Hubbard looking to get it to Alonzo. Alonzo can't put it in the zone. Marshwood has it. Here is Aiden Lockhart. Lockhart behind the net. Good pressure there from Alonzo. Kept it in the zone in the far corner. Now sent to the other side. Lucas Hubbard will track it down. And now Shane Bergeron looks to help out his senior teammate. Here's Alonzo in the far corner looking to get it in front. Marcotte was driving the net, but Marshwood takes it down with two defenders in the corner. Here's Bergeron. Now on net. Good shot there coming from Lucas Hubbard. Sumner Wood put his pads down and made the easy save. Now back, this will go over the bar and into the far corner as Marshwood looks to clear. No icings, continuous play mostly, and as I say that, it'll go down to the far corner, but no icing called. Jake Florent now, good defense. Marshwood looking to keep it in the zone. Now back with Zach Camp. Entering the zone, here goes Bergeron. Bergeron, good stick work there from Aiden Andrew Brain for Marshwood. Now looking in front of the net, Marcotte couldn't get there. Brain. 
Now on the far side. Here's Heath McLean. McLean back to Alonzo. Alonzo now forward. Shane Bergeron was trying to tip it in the zone. He couldn't get it there. Just joining us, I'm Zach Durango here with Cole Purvis and Josh Pulse for a short crew on TATV for our last winter sports broadcast. But we're getting it to you for Class A quarterfinal action in boys hockey between the number two team, the Thorn Academy Golden Trojans, and the number 17, the Marshwood Noble Trape Academy Sanford Nighthawks. Bodette keeps it in the zone. Could have been offsides, but they'll keep playing. There's Jay Skillings, Skillings with a nice shot, and that was wide. Now Brady Corson in front, and a tip shot there from Evan Bodette is no good. Heath McLean was driving the net, put an extra tip in front, and they didn't like that. Bodette goes down. Lots of action now as both teams start to get a little more physical. It's been the most physical game we've seen. Marshwood definitely likes to play that way, play physical. It's been good continuous action, but a lot of big hits by the Nighthawks. The chance for Bodette in front, and a good save there from Wood. Now trying to leave the zone is Wentworth. Good work by Heath McLean there. Thorne Academy, skill-wise, has been the better team so far, working really well together on offense. That'll be a stoppage of play, and it will end up as an icing. That icing is brought to you by Top It Mobile Ice Cream Cart. The only place you should go when you want ice cream, or you want a cart fill filled with ice cream for any of your event needs, whether that be a birthday, a wedding, a bar mitzvah even, or if you just want to have some ice cream and you're feeling like a cold tasty treat you can go online at topitonthego.com for more information here's Lasseur behind the net trying to turn with it his shot stayed behind the net and Pellerin picks it up now Lasseur back near the blue line throws it into the far corner and the Pellerin's the only one there and Marshall will give him some space was looking in front to Lasseur Hubbard with the slap shot Second chance is no good. Now here goes Marshwood into the zone. Here's a chance for Di Moretto and a great defensive play by Gavin Pellerin as Porter Krause was out of position and saved it there as Thorne Academy keeps their 1-0 lead. Yeah, that was dangerous there, but a good stop by Pellerin defensively. Here's Lasseur looking for the breakout pass to Pellerin. It's far, but they'll call icing as it is a delayed icing here in Maine High School hockey. These two teams played earlier this season here at the Biddeford Ice Arena in TA1, 4-2, and part of that was getting off to a good start. They scored two goals in the first period, and they put one on the board here in the first period, and then nearly gave up another one. But we'll see how the defense responds as Marshwood looks to get the puck into their zone a little bit here, which they haven't been able to do so far. Face off one by Marshwood, and a good save there from Porter Krause. He'll dive on it, and we'll have another stoppage of play. Somebody, We have somebody watching from Bonita Springs. We hope you're enjoying the nice weather. I don't know what state that's in, but I'm assuming Bonita Springs is a hot place. It's in Florida. Enjoy your normal days of weather as we're going to have one of the biggest snowstorms of the year coming up tomorrow in the state of Maine. Shane Berger on the first to it. He will fight with Zach Camp for it in the corner. It leaves the zone. Marshall throws it back in, but it went off of... Camp's leg as he was coming out of the zone. They'll say no offside, and Hubbard will be the only one back to retreat to grab the puck. Here's Florent, far corner. Good breakout pass to Bergeron. Marcotte was behind the play, couldn't get to it. Now, here's Benjamin Thing. Was looking forward to Aiden Lockhart, but it was too far and offside. Thorne Academy with a solid first period so far. 6.07 to go in the first. One goal thanks to Jacob Marcotte, the junior for Thorne Academy. Marcotte had a big playoff run last year with lots of points for the Trojans. He was a sophomore last year, now a junior, so he'll be here next year as well. Yeah, he can get hot, and then they have some sophomores this year, especially Brady Pecora and Gavin Pellerin, that can contribute a lot to them offensively here in the playoffs. They might need them. Here's Pecora, was looking back for Heath McLean. It went, bounced over his stick. Now they'll have to reset up on offense. Bodette, Pecora saves it. Brady Pecora, the younger brother of former TA hockey player Nolan Pecora, who is playing at NYA this year. And he had a very good season. As their season ended, I think, a few weeks ago. 
And Brady Bacor, as you said, Cole, been a really big contributor this year as Wood makes the easy stop off his pad and will give it off to his defender. This one will, will roll all the way down the boards and they'll say no icing as really was tipped by a lot of, a lot of players. Here's McLean fighting for it behind the net. McLean in a wrestling match and he's signaling to the referee. He's not trying to do that. Now here comes Kyle Lesser. Lesser tips it forward, was looking at Evan Bode and Wood will hold. Almost a great two-on-one chance, but the puck was just out of reach for Lester and for Baudet. Yeah, Marshwood caught a break there, and a good job by Kyle Lester doing everything he can, sprawled out on the ice trying to get it to his teammate. But Marshwood doesn't break there. Appreciate everyone for watching our last winter sports broadcast here on TATV. Last hockey broadcast for myself as well. Face off, it's a big tangle up. Marshwood definitely has not had as many offensive opportunities to store in Academy, but is really playing a better physical game right now. They are pushing the one Academy to make mistakes. As Wood makes a save off his stick and puts it into the far corner. Now here's Florent. Florent now forward, here's Marshwood. They were waiting for it. Here's a chance now with the puck is Chase Turcotte. Turcotte drives the net, Turcotte shoots, and what a save by Porter Kraus. Porter Kraus robs Turcotte. Flashed a leg, went down, and a big stop for the senior goaltender. He's had to make some crazy saves so far tonight, but he's done a nice job just laying out for these stops. Great save there from Porter Kraus. A highlight reel save as Marshall knew they had a breakout setting up and Turcotte was there as well with Thomas Demaretto. Not a ton of shots on goal from Marshwood, but they have gotten a lot of quality looks that could have gone in. But Porter Krause has done his job to keep him out of the net and keep this game scoreless for Marshwood. Here's Benjamin Thing. Thing now over to Benjamin St. Hilaire. Into the zone. It goes Emmett Hammond. It's to the far corner. Bergeron's the first one there. Tips it forward to Alonzo. Bergeron has it now. Looking to Alonzo. And a good breakout now from the neutral zone to the offensive zone. Good movement. Here's a chance for a shot. It's over Porter Krause's right shoulder. That shot came in from number 18, Ryan Dumont. Now here's Jake Marcotte was looking to go through the legs of the defender. And Marshwood stood strong there. Sent back into Marshwood's end. And Sam Knowles will go to to retrieve. Gets it over to Aiden Lockhart. Lockhart looking forward, great breakout pass. Now to Dumont. Dumont, good defense from Hubbard. That's why he's a Travis Roy semifinalist. Very good in the defensive zone and has great discipline on defense. Now behind the net, Marshwood looking for an option. Good check there from McLean. And Marshwood stays with it, that'll be out of the zone. That's a big mistake there from Emmett Hammond. A sophomore forward, and they'll say offside. Marshwood, the chance to set something up on offense. But TA puts the pressure, forces them offsides. We'll have a faceoff from the red dot. It's been a fun first quarter to watch so far. Really physical, but also clean. No penalties so far. Both teams really want to advance here, you can tell. Faceoff now. Thorne Academy wins it. Marshwood has it, Baudet now. It'll be a stoppage of play. And a face off in front of the Marshwood Nighthawks goalie, Sumner Wood. Wood has had some very good games this season. His shutout performance was incredible. Many saves. He's looked great even after that beautiful shot from Jacob Marcotte. And we know we know you didn't see it here on TATV as we were having some technical difficulties, but boy, when I tell you that was a tough angle to shoot anything from. And Jacob Marcotte put it in the net to put his team up 1-0 here in the first. Here's going to be a long shot on the ice. Didn't even get in the air. That one came in from Zach Camp. And Porter Krause made a save for the Trojans. Here's Lucas Hubbard now. Hubbard over to Braden Duhane. 
Duhane, far corner to Baudet. Baudet tried a good move, kept in the zone by Wentworth. Marshall now going to the front of that. Porter Krause sticks it away. Great heads up play from Porter Krause. And now a chance for a two on two. Skilling's looking forward to Baudet, tipped out of the air by Benjamin Thing. Great play there from Thing. And a hard check from Daniel Fuller on Jake Skillings. Fuller and McLean. McLean will clear the zone. Now here's Benjamin Thing. Marshall would have settled down in this game and started to set some offensive plays up. We are under a minute to go in the first period. Lassur tips it into the zone, so no icing. Here's Pellerin fighting forward behind the net. Marshwood takes control, trying to move out of the zone, past the stick of Caden Fontaine. McLean throws it back in the zone and will wait for his team to charge after it. Pellerin is there. Pellerin stops the play from leaving the zone, now high in the air, off of the netting. They'll take a stop and a face off in Marshwood's defensive zone. We'll have one player change. Jacob Marcotte back on the ice. Gavin Corson is off. Corson, one of the underclassmen, has been contributing this year for the Trojans. Face off one by Thorne Academy, but Pellerin's move is too far. Tipped high in the air over Wood, and he had to stick it to the side. That took a couple of odd bounces, and good reaction play there from Sumner Wood, the goaltender for the Nighthawks. Here's Nathan Locke behind the net. You know, trying to clear the zone. Big check there from Brady Corson. And the two of them are going at it. Corson and Caden found Fontaine. He got his stick, stick hit out of his hand intentionally. And by Fontaine, and no caught by the referee, Coach Gagnon is furious. Both referees just didn't, all three didn't, just didn't see it as the f we are down to actually the end of the first quarter, first period, excuse me, as they have some, some talks with the referee. Just a late couple of hits there. That'll do it for the first period. So Thorne Academy leads 1-0 here on TATV. We'll take a break and be back for some intermission thoughts and the second period of action. Hey, Dan, how's that proposal coming? Just finished. I am sending it right now. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Oh no. How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. to attend Tams because it was a change of scenery. It was a much smaller school. Because of the amazing teachers. It's how small it is and the community about it and how everybody knows each other. You can know all the kids here, so it makes it much more easier to make friends. They just get you ready for high school. Tams is special. Tams is amazing. Tams is fabulous. Tams is fun. Tams feels like a family.
here on TA TV as the second period is just about to get going here. The referees are back on the ice and the teams are coming out. Thorne Academy leads the Marshwood Nighthawks right now 1-0 thanks to Jacob Marcotte who scored pretty much in the first minute or two in the first period. We apologize for the technical difficulties we had. We missed the first two or three minutes of action and had a little bit of time where the camera wasn't moving. But again, bit of an ice arena internet, it's very tough and we have three guys here. So, you know, I, I know at home you're cutting out some slack, but just make sure you cut out some slack here because we are doing our best to get these broadcasts out as best as we can. But Cole, right now, Thorne Academy really in control offensively. Marshwood definitely is winning the physical game right now, really trying to push the, uh, Thorne Academy in their own defensive zone. But T has had the more oppor offensive opportunities in this game. What does Marshwood need to do if they want to kind of set up some play here? Marshwood has to get some breakaways. They've had some guys getting loose into the offensive zone, but TA's had two or three guys right there to meet them. So they're going to need a man advantage at some point, and a power play at some point in this game would definitely help them do that. Um, just get a good shot on goal and maybe score off of a rebound or something like that. Uh, just make crisp passes and make TA's defense really work here. I could see this being a one-goal game at the end in that first quarter snipe by Jake, first period snipe by Jake Marcotte could possibly be the difference uh, in this game. So we'll see if Marshwood can tie it up here in the second quarter because TA is a tough team to come back from behind against. Porter Krause, the goaltender for the Trojans, also made a ridiculous save on a breakaway opportunity. The player was crossing the net front and he flashed the pad and the glove and really stopped a chance for Marshwood to tie it also early in the game. Porter Krause has been the difference maker. Now Thorne Academy going left to right in your screen. Marshall going right to left. I want to thank our sponsors before we get going here. I want to thank Sacco and Bedford Savings, Paquin and Carol Insurance, and the Web Family Law Firm. Also let you know this is our last winter sports broadcast of the year here on TATV. It's also my last hockey broadcast. So let's make it a good one. First line's back out there. Face off will come between number seven. That's Chase Turcott who had that big chance for Marshwood stopped by Kraus and Brady Pecora. Face off one by Turcon, and now here goes Marshwood, hoping to get some offense going early. Yeah, and we didn't mention uh, coming out of the break that Porter Kraus played such an excellent first period, and he's going to have to keep doing that because Marshwood did get some quality looks, but he's been as good as he's looked all year. Here's Thomas Dimoretto. Behind the net now, Florent takes it away. Good work by Turcotte to put pressure on. The shot's out in front of the net, and a great reaction saved by Porter Krause, and now they're going at it in front of the net as they were tapping the pads of Porter Krause. I'll try to replay what I saw there. The it puck, almost, puck got thrown in front of the net off of Hubbard's yeah. skate, almost in it, an own goal in their own net. And Porter Krause saw what was happening, dove out, grabbed the puck, and then Marshall players were still, you know, pushing that. Uh, Krause's arms and legs trying to push that puck in. And that's where the physicality happened as they want to defend their goaltender. And, and again, Porter Krause comes up big in a moment that doesn't really seem as big uh, in the whole grand scheme of things. I just had flashbacks to a game I went to against South Portland on the road when they had kind of an own goal. And so it's a good thing that that didn't happen again. Florent throws it out of play. This time, it will not be delay a game as those penalties do not happen in high school hockey. If they did, we'd have a lot more players in the box. Gavin Corson will face off against number 13, Bradley Wentworth. Face off one by Thorne Academy. A quick pressure there from Daniel Fuller. Fuller had a slash on the arm of Brady Corson late in the first period, which caused some stir as we went to break. But no penalty came out of it. Now quickly, here's Zach Camp into the corner. Now out into the center. It'll go back. Jake Florent picks it up, and he'll try to sauce it over to Gavin Corson. Bradley Wentworth kept it in the zone. The one Academy looking to break out on offense for the first time in this period. Lasur throws it to mid ice. The Pelin was waiting, but first to it was Zach Camp. Now Hubbard, quick moving puck here in the first few minutes of the second period. If you're just joining us, I'm Zach Trangle here with Cole Purvis and Josh Pulse for helping us out on tech and camera. Shout out to Josh Pulse for, and also shout out to Troy Bolduck, who is yeah. feeling under the weather right now, our former, not former, our, our usual cameraman. I shouldn't say former, but our usual cameraman. <laughs> Hopefully he feels better and he can restart his Ironman streak. We believe that Troy Bolduck is in the TATV record books with the most consecutive games helping us out on camera. 
And, it, it, I mean, it was that, like, it must be close to 20 games in a row. He was, you know, he, he missed one because he was on vacation a couple weeks ago. But he'll start his streak back up in the spring. There's a shot from the corner from camp, and Kraus makes a good save. And our Florida man hasn't commented yet either. We'll I'll, check, I'll check Facebook yeah. uh, uh, comments right now. We'll see what we can. Uh, I know he's watching. Let's see. Usually he. Oh, there he is, Jeff Christianberry, watching from Port Charlotte. And you know him. He's going to tell us how, how, uh, how hot it is. In Port Charlotte, you want to take a guess, Cole, on the d degrees down there? Uh, like right now? Yes. 70, I don't know, 77. Wow, on the money, Cole. Ooh, 77. Wow. Look at you. I may not be a hockey expert, but I can guess, I can guess those temperatures <laughs> guess, really good. Guess the weather. Here's Marcotte. Stick was lifted by Joshua Sawyer. Now Heath McLean in his own defensive zone. Off the skate of Bergeron, and he's hitting the back there from camp. Marcotte can't keep in the zone, and now Marshwood looking to start on offense. It got tipped, so no icing. Only one icing so far in this game. Brady Corson looking for it in the corner. Again, we do apologize. The angles in the bit of an ice wing are just really tough, so once it gets in that far corner on the close side of the ice, we won't be able to see everything that's happening, but we'll do our best to tell you when it goes in the corner like that. To be out of play behind Porter Kraus on a face-off in front of the senior netminder for the Trojans. Face-off one by Marshwood. Quick shot there from Caden Fontaine is wide. Off the pad of Porter Kraus. Marshwood trying to set something up, but now here goes Baudet. Baudet with some speed. Good stick by Fontaine. Really good job. Defensive stick work by Marshwood today to stop TA from really breaking out on any quick rushes. Bacora launches it behind. Sumner Wood, Bodette was there, and now Cam Sear. Bodette, he's tripped up. No penalty. Now fighting for it, picked up by Thomas Demoretto. Demoretto, this one's stolen away by, by Bodette. Bodette will throw it on net. Wood with the save. Fontaine tips it away. Big check there for Bacora, and they're gonna call Brady Bacora on a penalty. That is a tough call against Thorne Academy. He was laying a hit as Baudet was looking to turn with the puck. That's a tough call on Thorne Academy as they'll go to the penalty kill. Sooner or later there was gonna be a penalty. Marshwood's a feisty team. They've been doing some instigating, but there it's TA that unfortunately will Brady Pecora will head to the box. We'll see if Marshwood can take advantage of this man up here. So Marshwood will go on the power play now. For the first time in this game, two minute power play. Lasur and Turcotte on the face off. Picked up by Florent and a quick backhand out of the zone. Good start on the penalty kill for the Trojans. Gavin Pellerin is there. This has been our top power, excuse me, uh, penalty kill line this year. Pellerin, Lasur, and Hubbard and Florent. Into the zone. That was Ryan Dumont and cleared out by Lasur. Yeah, a lot of seniors out here, and they're going to rely on guys like Lucas Hubbard and Kyle Lasur to kill these penalties in these crucial spots in the playoffs. Marshwood going to get out of their defensive zone. Now here quickly comes Aiden Lockhart. Lockhart shoots blocked by Hubbard. He gets his own rebound. And he's trying to get it out of the zone. Now Pellerin will clear, and Lasur is the only one who was ready for that one. He's going into the zone by himself, but he circles away from it. Lasur goes for a change instead. I like the idea there from Kyle Lasur. Kind of faked out the defender. Alonzo lays a check as Lockhart puts it in the zone. Turcotte couldn't get there, and then Lucas Hubbard We'll throw that one the length of the ice. And a minute down in this penalty on Brady Pecora. Marshwood hasn't had any opportunities yet. It's Florent. Now he'll send it back in. Marshwood just can't get their offense started. And this will be covered by Wood as it bounced off the boards right to the netminder. And we'll have a shorthanded face-off 
for the Trojans. The serve back out there. Marshwood trying to set something up behind their net. 10.05 to go in the second period. This one's kept in the zone by Lasur, and he will chase after Andrew Brainy. Here's Benjamin Thing, and Thing is able to keep it off his skate. He's looking to move past Brady Corson. Corson was in the air, and he tapped it down with his hand. Now back is Nathan Locke. Tipped by Baudet. Here's Evan Baudet with a chance. Baudet looking to go to the net. Good move by Baudet. And he's taken down on his way in. And he is, he got hit hard in the stomach area. And that's going to be, oh, they got to call it a holding penalty. And right as Marshwood heads off the power play, here goes Storm Academy to the power play. Good job to draw the penalty there from Evan Baudet, the senior captain. Now T with the man advantage. A good job just putting his body on the line. Tries to wrap it around the goaltender and sneak it in on the right side. But ran into a defender. Now T.A.'s chance to put another one on the board. This one's stolen away, a short-headed chance now. And what a save by Porter Krause! Daniel Fuller, one-on-one, -on -one, short-handed chance. And Porter Kraus robs him. What a save by Kraus. Stood his ground. And now here comes Fuller again. Another short end chance. He'll just dump it in behind. And a broken stick for Brady Pecora. Porter Kraus with a ridiculous save. It's been awesome. That's the second time tonight he's made a highlight real play. No defender there for TA to help him out. And he has been excellent. That play just kind of caught me off guard there. I didn't really see what was happening until Fuller was about 10 feet away from Porter Kraus. And Kraus put his arm right on his pad and said, no way am I letting you tie this game. It's still 1-0 Thorne Academy, 8.41 to go in the second period. Still 109 to go on the Evan Bodet power play, which he drew a holding penalty. Both teams with some good shorthanded attempts here, too. Here's Lasur with some speed. Lasur beats Camp to it. He'll throw it in front with for, for Baudet. Couldn't get a stick down on the ice. Here's Hubbard. Hubbard over to McLean. McLean shoots over the net and right over the bar. Shane Bergeron saves it. He'll now go to the top near the blue line. He'll put one on net, and Wood comes sliding to his left to make the save, and he will hold. Up one by the Trojans. Here's Bergeron. Leaves it off for Hubbard. Hubbard, good stick by Marshall. Now a chance for a break. Here's Joshua Sawyer. Sawyer's got Turcotte. Sawyer shoots and he missed. He had Turcotte wide open. And now TA with the counter attack rush. Bergeron to Baudet. Baudet to the front of the net. And Wood holds as Baudet couldn't get a shot off. Well, I know you can't expect to score short handed, but. Two great opportunities, and Kraus comes up with a big save on the first one, and then just a miss, well off target on the second. I really thought Sawyer was going to pass it across to Turcotte. It was a two on zero there. Yeah. No defender. And Marshall misses a crucial opportunity with eight to go in the second period. Bergeron, quick shot, saved by Wood off the pad and the blocker. Still 18 seconds on the power play, so TA has a couple more chances to shoot. Here's Baudet. Now Hubbard, Hubbard was looking over to Bergeron, tipped off the stick of Fuller. Now Bergeron, it bounced behind the net. He was just looking across for Heath McLean. Five seconds. Here's, now Heath McLean will shoot. That was just by the post. Shane Bergeron were now five on five and they'll go back to Hubbard out of the zone. And Hubbard gives away a big break, but a great defensive play there. And now taken away by Wentworth. Wentworth going to the net and a good defensive play there. TA with some breakdown here in transition, and now here goes Lasur. Lasur will drive the net. Good move by Lasur. 
but he lost it. As Benjamin Thing got a stick in there late. Bodette is tripped up from behind, and there's no call. I think more of a accident there. The referee will keep his arm down for no penalty call. Seven minutes to go in the second period. And off the roof, so we'll have a stoppage of play. And Marsh was just waiting for T.A. to make one of these big turnovers once again. That could have been it right there. Lucas Hubbard couldn't handle the puck. Then Marshwood, as soon as they got it back to five on five, had a good chance. We talked about this in the pregame. This is going to be a big matchup, a physical matchup, and a tough win for either team, no matter the records, just because playoff hockey is a different, it's a different atmosphere. And you can see that both teams are really having to play hard to get good opportunities. Brayden Duhane's shot was blocked before he even got to the net. And Wood went sliding to his right. Palloran can't get his stick out of the defender's arms. Duhane shoots and Wood makes another save. Change for both teams. If you're just joining us, I'm Zach Taranko here with Cole Purvis and Josh Paulson for a short crew on TA TV. But it is our last one of the winter sports season. And we know we'll have a bigger crew once we get into the spring. If you want to join our broadcast, help us out with camera or sideline work, you want to get involved in any way, you can always talk to Josh Pulsifer at school. Or you can email him at josh.pulsifer at thornacademy.org. You can also reach out to Cole or I on any of our social medias. I would list them all with us. That would be a lot of things to list. And <laughs> we have an exciting game right now, so we'll keep our attention there. You can always just, you know, type in Zach Tarenko or Cole Purvis, and you'll probably find something. That will be icing on Thorn Academy, and that icing is brought to you by none other than Top It Mobile Ice Cream Cart. The only thing colder than the ice is Top It Ice Cream. You can find more information about the Top It Mobile Ice Cream Cart at www.topitonthego.com. There's Gavin Corson to take the face off. And Lasur came into the circle to win it. And then glove down there by Benjamin Thing. And now Florent over to Hubbard. Hubbard into the neutral zone. Gavin Corson couldn't get a full stick on it. And here's the first chance for Thomas DiMoretto on this offensive rush. So go back to Zach Camp, who will send it right on to Jake Florent. Just missed his left hip. Here's Gavin Corson behind the net. Stick down by Fontaine. Now Gavin Corson taking it out. Corson off his skate. And here goes Gavin Corson. He's sticked from behind and hit into the boards by Zach Camp. Pellerin behind the net looking in front for Lassar. Couldn't get a stick on it and then sent the length of the ice. And they will call an icing on Marshwood. Again, brought to you by Tub and Mobile Ice Cream Cart here on TATV. Corson, one of the smaller players. Same with Skillings. Now here in a physical playoff hockey game, they've taken some big checks so far. They'll redo the face-off. As it is, it didn't really come out the way they wanted it to come out. Five minutes to go in the second period. Thorn Academy still the 1-0 lead. Thanks to the junior, Jacob Marcotte, for the great goal in the first period. Brady Corson met with quick pressure from Andrew Brainy. Now taken away for a three on two. Great move by Bodette. Here goes Evan Bodette into the zone. Bodette looking for the pass, got to the cross, and Skillings couldn't finish it. Here's Heath McLean, the slap shot. That one's off the backboards near the post. Great shot with some power on it from Heath McLean. Was looking at Skillings. McLean has it. He'll throw it in the boards behind for Brady Pecora. Pecora and Skillings. Now here's Bodette. Bodette lays a big check. Here's Skillings off the side. And a good save by Wood. Pecora was looking to see if he could tap it in. And Marshwood really laying in some, some physicality there after the whistle blew. And yeah, you go back to that play a couple seconds ago. Evan Bodette did a great job drawing the defender over. And then just a nice backhanded pass to Skillings. Couldn't finish the deal, though. At this point in the game, Cole, my player of the game, has to be Porter Krause. 
I think no matter how this game ends, it's probably going to end up being Porter Krause from his a couple of incredible saves to keep this game 1-0. Now a 2-on-2 two -two chance for the Nighthawks. This shot is blocked off the leg by Brady Corson. That one looked like it hurt, but Corson still going strong there as he passes it forward to Marcotte. Marcotte to Bergeron. Bergeron shouldered hard. Good check there from Zach Camp. Camp now pressured by Jacob Marcotte behind the net. Was looking at Bergeron. Bergeron from the side off the outside of the netting. <laughs> the way the net rippled, it looked like it had gone in from up here in the booth. Marshall's just got to spend more time in their zone. I don't think they'd like their chances going to the fourth down one nothing against TA. So we'll see what they can do here in transition. It's Jacob Marcotte who got tripped up from behind. And they'll call a penalty for a trip. Thorne County back on the power play here with 3.33 to go in the second period. If you are very sad that this is our last winter, sp winter sports broadcast and you want to hear Cole and mine and Josh Pulsar's voice, you can always go listen to Trojan Talk. We have a new episode out, episode 43, out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube with a very cool new uh, template for the video, which you can go check out. Talk to lots about this hockey team and their playoff run that they are about to have and the Boston Bruins this week. Yeah, we hit a lot of topics this week. One of the better episodes of Trojan Talk. Now in the center, here's Bodette. Sticked high in the air. No high sticking. McLean fighting for it. Now here's Hubbard. Hubbard now over to Pellerin. Back to Hubbard. Back to Pellerin. They've got time. No need to force anything. Pellerin shoots. And a great glove save there from Wood. We'll have a face off to Wood's right. We'll have a change. Bergeron will come on to the power play unit. Lasur can't win the face off, but it trickles back out to Hubbard. Hubbard will leave it off to Bergeron. Bergeron shoots off a skate and into the netting. Another face off will come in front of the Nighthawks netminder, Sumner Wood, who's having a great game here after giving up an early goal. 2.42 to go in the second period, 108 to go on the penalty. Here's Lasur. This one cleared down the ice. The first one to it is Porter Krause. We'll send it around to Hubbard. Good heads up play there. Hubbard going back to Heath McLean. And this is class A quarterfinal action between number two Thorn Academy and number seven Marshwood. Also in the co-op team of Marshwood is Sanford, Trape, and Noble. The winner of this game will play the winner of number three, Edward Little versus number six, Bangor. That will be next Tuesday, March 7th at the Cross Insurance Arena. Find more information on, in, uh, excuse me, in upcoming dates later in the weekend and early next week. Here is Lucas Hubbard. Out to Bergeron. Bergeron puts one on the net. It got tipped and it trickled across the goal line. But no opportunity there. Here's Hubbard. Hubbard, he was falling down. This shot oh, off the shoulder. Heath McLean's shot got tipped to the shoulder of Wood. He just barely made the save. Great opportunity there for the Trojans. Here's Bodette. Gives it off for Lasur. Now back to Bergeron. Bergeron over to McLean. McLean sets up for the shot. And Wood with a great glove save. Last time we saw McLean there on a power play this year, he put that into the top corner. Yeah, really good chance on the one-timer there and a great glove save by the goaltender from Marshwood. And they're about to kill this penalty. Only eight seconds left, and they can have a chance to score here before the third period. Here's Zach Camp. Pellerin gets to it, but he has pressure quickly from Fuller. Now here's Skillings was looking for Brady Pecora. Now here goes Fuller and Florent, but with the delayed icing, it will be an icing. 
Brought to you by Tottenham Mobile Ice Cream Cart here on TATV. When you think about this team's path to the state championship, less teams in the tournament than last year, their path is very doable. They, they face a lot of teams that they've beaten already. I know Edward Little, the three seed, they've beaten them already this year. Falmouth, of course, in the state championship is tough, but getting there, it's a very realistic path. Jacob Marcock goes back to Florent. I definitely agree with you, Cole. A little bit easier this year, but does it? But Coach Jimmy Gagnon needs to make sure his team still prepares every game like, like they did last year. That's how they got to the state championship. That's how they upset teams like Edward Little and Falmouth last year in the playoffs. One minute to go in the second period. Here's Benjamin Thing, the first offensive opportunity in the last few minutes just because of the power play for Marsh. And Marshwood now, they're looking to get some opportunity here behind the net. Was looking out in front to Turcotte. Jacob Marcotte for the Trojans. Florent can't clear the zone, but now a mistake by Turcotte and sent in on Brady Corson. Corson will chip it out of the zone. Here's Fontaine. Backhands it to Di Moretto. Di Moretto's looking at Turcotte. Now Marcotte, slick move there, and Jacob Marcotte went to the offensive zone. Marcotte over to Baudet. Baudet couldn't hold it. Camp quickly to it, and then pushes Baudet off the puck under 20 seconds to go. One more rush here for the Nighthawks. It's going across in the center now. Here's Zach Camp. Camp leaves it off. Here's Fontaine's shot. Good defense on McLean. Fontaine couldn't get it in six seconds. And as this one goes to the far corner, and Baudet will hold it. That'll do it for the second period. Thorne Academy still leads 1 0. Marshwood's been on the doorstep a couple times, but Porter Krause is holding Thorne Academy strong. We'll take a break on TATV and be back for the last period of action. Hey Dan, how's that proposal coming? Just finished, I am sending it right now. Okay, good. <laughs> oh no. How are we looking for noon? We got like two minutes. Dan. to attend Tams because it was a change of scenery. It was a much smaller school. Because of the amazing teachers. How small it is and the community about it and how everybody knows each other. You can know all the kids here, so it makes it much more easier to make friends. They just get you ready for high school. Tams is special. Tams is amazing. Tams is fabulous. Tams is fun. Tams feels like a family.
back here on TATV for the third period of action. Thorna County with a one goal lead right now over the Marshwood Noble Sanford Trape Academy Nighthawks. It is a, a tough physical battle between these two teams. Thorn Academy holds the edge right now. And they're doing a great job of winning this game. If you want to eat, you can eat for a I'm Zach Taranko here, Cole Purvis on color commentary, and Josh Pulsifer doing his magic. Tech and camera and texting me links about golf. I mean, he's doing everything. He has been helping us out, even with the technical difficulties. And here we go. TA going right to left on your screen. Marshall going left to right. And I've lost Wi-Fi on my phone. Here we go. Jake Skillings. Can't win it off the faceoff. Fl Florent gets checked as he sends it in to the far corner. Here's Evan Bodet. He's hit hard and lost his stick. Actually, that was a stick lost by Turcott. Now fighting for it. Marshwood comes away with it. Trying to clear their zone, they do. Turcotte sends it forward, trying to get it into TA's defensive zone, but Hubbard takes it away. Skillings now forward to Pacora, and they're going to say offside as TA was on a good rush there. Zach, as we start the third quarter, 1 0 is a one goal game, but for Marshwood, it looks like a tall task because of how good Porter Krause has been. And he just needs to put together one more quality quarter, and TA will be moving on here, so we'll see if he can do that and if the offense can give him some help. Porter Krause has definitely been the difference maker for Thorne Academy today, and if he can pull off a shutout, that's a pretty impressive feat. Yeah. A shutout, even in any quarterfinal matchup against any team, is impressive. And he's had some big saves today to prove that he has been that guy for Thorne Academy. It's, it's an icing on Marshwood. And the one thing that you mentioned earlier, I think, is the, is the biggest thing um, for any team, is that it's about... Having a goalie that can get hot at the right time, that can stand on their head and make big saves, that's exactly what Porter Krause has done. And if he can continue this into the semifinal round, and even the final round, Thorne Academy might be the favorites to win. And he hasn't been their full-time goalie. He's rotated yes. with Drew Johnson, so he hasn't been able to really get into much of a rhythm. And hopefully this can really boost him forward as they move on in the playoffs. And they're going to keep playing tougher and tougher teams. That's what the playoffs is all about. Here's Brady Corson. Fighting for it with Bradley Wentworth. Corson goes down head first into the boards. And he sends a check down, and now he's going to go for a penalty. Brady Corson will head to the box. And that is not a good way to start the third period for yeah. the Trojans. Yeah, you just get nervous. It's the playoffs. It's the last period. You're only up a goal, and a mistake like that could cost you. Possibly the season if Marshwood's able to score here and get back into this game. Corson with a little bit of a retaliation move. And now Marshwood's headed to the power play. They've been good at laying off when Marshwood tries to initiate something. Turcott will spin around here as they put the penalty on the board. And now it'll be Turcott to face off against Brady Pecora and Bodet. Send it out of the zone. I gotta say, we, we did talk about this earlier, but the fan section today yeah. for Thorne Academy is, is great. And it's not about just having such a loud crowd, it's about the school spirit we have as Krause makes a shoulder save. I mean, this is the biggest fan section we have. They've spread out here. Huge. It is, it's great to see the school spirit for even a quarterfinal matchup on a night like tonight. They've been loud. You can tell when they do a chant or something that it's definitely louder than normal. Marshwood has it behind their net now, looking to take it out of the zone. Here comes Bodette with a chance of a shorthanded and a great save by Wood. And now Marshwood's going to break out here on a two-on-two. -two. They'll send it forward now for Aiden Lockhart. Lockhart shoots, shoulder save. Kraus will hold. Kraus is hit on the arm as Lockhart went by, and he's down. And he's up and okay. That's good to see. Yep. Looks just, it looked just a little, a little bit uh, surprised by that hit. He's on one knee right now. Hopefully it's just a stinger and it'll go off. And he looks to be okay. Here. Yep. That's good to see. The last thing they wanted to see right now is the referee is talking to Kraus. The, rest just, the referees just want to make sure that Kraus is okay to continue the game. And they're going to say yes. So 
I, I think you're right, Cole. Just a little bit of a stinger. Just caught him in the on angle. Maybe knocked the wind out of him. He's okay, and here we go. Back into action. Now Marshall on the power play. Here's a chance for a shot. Over the shoulder of Kraus and out of play. Another face off in front of Kraus, the netminder for the Trojans. But a pretty quick game here. Only about an hour and 10 minutes into this game. 12.39 to go. In the third period, T leads 1-0 over the Nighthawks. Taking it out now. Here's Joshua Sawyer. But Lucas Hubbard picks it up. He'll try to backhand it out of the zone off the skate of one of the Marshwood players. Now kept in with Sir. Almost had a breakaway chance. And Pellerin slaps that one hard out of the zone. And now Marshwood has to reset behind Sumner Wood, their goaltender. Good defensive stop there from Bodet. Bodet keeps it in the zone. Bodet has a chance now as he gets taken down a little bit there. No penalty called. Bodet can't keep it in the zone. But now as Lesser steps out, Bodet can go in. Bodet now just holding it in the corner. And he's just trying to waste some time off the clock there. Good job by Evan Bodet. Even those 15 seconds are crucial off the power play. Into the zone, Joshua Sawyer sends it behind. Kraus, Florent is there. And that is Andrew Brainy right after it. Taking away is Bodet. Bodet got a forward to Pacora. Pacora's got skillings. Pacora quickly to the net. Pacora shoots and he scores! Brainy Pacora as the power play ended. And the Trojans take a 2 0 lead in the third period. Pacora over the shoulder of Wood, and TA extends their lead, something they were looking for early in the third period. Just an awesome job by such a good offensive player. Brady Pacora is able to sneak that one in, and a real statement for TA as they go up 2 to nothing. Could possibly be the dagger here. And he had Skillings right with him, could have passed it to him, but takes it himself, and it was the right idea. That's why Pacora is such a great contributor on this team. He's so fast, and that's why he leads the team in goals. 14th of the year, first of the playoffs for Brady Pacora. And a huge check there from Turcotte onto Jacob Marcotte. Marcotte shakes it off, and now here goes Alonzo. Out of the zone now. Marcotte and Heath McLean back on Turcotte. Turcotte spins it around. Now back to Camp. Camp shoots blocked. No chance at a rebound as TA's defense takes it away. This one goes right on goal to Wood, and Wood has to make a save. An accurate clear out of the zone there from the Trojans. Gavin Corson takes this away. Gavin Corson could get a shot off as a couple of sticks from Ryan Dumont. Went in there, and Gavin Corson went hard on the boards, and they're going to call a penalty for elbowing. And Corson, looks like his arm hurts a little bit there. He seems to be okay as he comes off. But another power point now for the Trojans as they lead 2 0. 10 22 to go in the third period. Not a great penalty taken there from Marshwood Cole. Yeah, no. Can't do that when you're down in the third period of a playoff game. Hubbard now to Lasser. Now to Heath McLean. McLean over to Hubbard. Hubbard now to Shane Bergeron. Bergeron across to Bodet. It was off his skate. Couldn't hold on to it. Bergeron, the rebound chance. Couldn't get his full blade of his skate on it. Excuse me, of his stick. Now here's... Daniel Fuller, defended by Hubbard. And Fuller gets a stick into the head of Hubbard. And now Hubbard comes out of it, but Fuller went down. Fuller lost his stick. Here's Hubbard to Lasser. Lasser enters the zone. He'll go all the way around as Hubbard goes around. This one goes across to Bergeron. It looks like Fuller has a stick of the wrong side 
He's a it looks like he's a he's a righty, but he's using a left-handed stick right now because he lost his stick in the corner. So he's just playing defense the best he can. It's not something you see all day. His stick is still in the far corner, just hasn't gone to pick it up yet. And now he gets a right-handed stick. Here's McLean turning. 45 seconds on the penalty to Marshwood on the elbowing call. Here's Bodet fighting for it in the corner, taken away now by Benjamin Thing, and he'll hold it behind the net and then clear out to Florent, who is waiting for it at the red line. Now back for Benjamin Thing. Thing over and across to Camp. Camp shoulders with Pacora. Pacora gets tripped up and no call. That is a tough call. Thorne Academy could have gone a five on three there off that one. Here's Marcotte. Marcotte. And there's a the penalty now as Zach Camp will go to the box for an unnecessary hit on uh, Jacob Marcotte with eight seconds to go in the last penalty. After a clean first period, the penalties are really racking up for both teams there. And Marshwood's starting to kill themselves in this third period with penalties. And you can see where some of Marshwood's frustrations are coming from. You know, they are doing such a great job to stay in this game. They start the third, and T.A. has taken over. T.A. has turned on a switch right now, and that's given him a goal and all these offensive opportunities, and that causes Marshall to make mistakes. Shows how important the goaltender is, and it's got to be frustrating offensively when you can't get anything going because T.A.'s goalie is just on fire right now. A little bit of confusion by the T.A. bench, so they're going to call a timeout. Five on three for eight seconds. Then a five on four for a minute and 52. Zach Camp took the two minute penalty for roughing. Again, we appreciate everybody watching here on TV for our last winter sports broadcast. I'm Zach Taranko along with Cole Purvis and Josh Pauls for here on TV. I also want to take a second to thank Mr. Pauls for and thank Cole Purvis for joining me for my last hockey broadcast. I've always had fun broadcasting hockey. It's my favorite sport. It's my favorite sport to broadcast as well. It's an exciting sport, and we've had some great games over the years here. And I'm definitely going to miss these games. But very soon, we'll be moving on to boys and girls lacrosse in yeah. the spring. No, it's been awesome. Hockey games are a ton of fun to broadcast, and I know it's your favorite sport. I think it's probably what you're best at too. So I appreciate that. You'll be taking over, Cole. You have to you have to work on some I of your hockey oh, yeah. hockey terminology. After what I, I have watched some YouTube videos before. There you on go. I'll say the hardest one that I, I had to learn a few years ago was the difference between or, or how to how back checking and forward checking works. Yeah. That's gonna, that's going to be a, a long YouTube video for you. <laughs> yeah, it, no, I will. The sir is cross checked head first into the boards and no call. So Marshwood continuing the physicality. As here goes Baudet. They're going to get in the zone. We're back to five on four now. Here's Lesur. Drops it off to Bergeron, and he'll put it in the, in the boards behind. Now here's Baudet. Baudet trying to make a nice move and put it through the pads of Wood, but Wood holds on. Great move by Baudet there. Apologize here. Scoreboard was having some technical difficulties. It is 2 near 2 0, not 0 0. Storm Academy has goals from Jacob Marcotte and Brady Pacora in this game. 118 to go on the power play. 748 to go in the third period. Face off taken back by Baudet. Now here's Hubbard. Hubbard to Bergeron. Bergeron comes near the blue line. He will send it forward to Baudet. Baudet couldn't get it on goal. Lesser now behind to McLean. McLean in front to Baudet. And he couldn't direct it on net. Here's McLean and Baudet fighting for it. McLean comes out with it. Now to Hubbard. Hubbard will throw it on net. Baudet with a tip and it's just wide. Great look there from the captain, Lucas Hubbard. They've been doing all they can on these power plays to center the puck to Evan Baudet. That's what they're trying to do here and get him a goal. Lesser comes away with it. Baudet is there. And Bergeron keeps in the zone. Bergeron is checked into the Marshwood bench. Assis has a few words. 
for the Marshwood bench. And Fuller felt the need to tap his stick in <laughs> front of Kraus there. So they're trying to keep this physicality up, maybe get a goal or two with 7.02 to go in the third period. You, you can't say they're not trying because they have come out and shown some fire. They came out here for warm-ups and started waving their flag, <laughs> which was a little interesting, and then Something just a very, very physical often. team throughout the game. Here's Brady Corson. Tries to let a check on Fontaine. He missed, but Fontaine couldn't keep control of the puck. Now here's Pecora with 19 seconds to go on the power play. Pecora drops it back for Brady Corson. Corson now out to Cam Sear. Sear fighting for it. Same with Marcotte. This will be thrown uh, high off the glass and behind. Three seconds. Turcott first to it. Good defense from Florent. And now we're back to five on five as TA looks for a breakout. A good stick there from the Marshwood defenseman Ryan Dumont. Marcotte throws it forward to Pacora. Cam Sear saves it. Pacora throws it into the zone and he will change. Cam Sear will drive after it. Dumont. Sear takes it away. Sear goes back. He's looking back to his defenseman. Now here's. Fontaine, Fontaine to Turcotte, Turcotte's offsides. And there is the call. Fontaine just couldn't keep it on the stick. 6.03 to go. Thorne Academy, with, Thorne Academy with a two goal lead right now. And that is, as, we, as the minutes wind down, it looks like this might just about be it. Can't count him out yet. Still enough time to score a couple of goals. But Thorne Academy is really held possession in this third period. And that's what it takes to win a game like this. Here's Skillings. Can't clear it past the red line. It'll go back to Duhane. Now McLean. Camp throws it back in the zone and they'll say an icing as Duhane goes back to get it. And that is another Top It mobile ice cream cart. Icing. The only thing colder than the ice is about to be the weather here in Saco Main, but on top of that, it's Top and Mobile ice cream. That might be the last Top and Mobile ice cream cart icing of the year. It might be. It's a sad moment. Who knows? There might be another one. And there's a great shot from Heath McLean right off the faceoff. NTA takes a three to zero lead. Right off the faceoff, McLean took a hard shot, far corner. He loves to shoot when he has the space, and that time. He puts the Trojans up another goal, and this one might be over. That's going to be the real dagger there. Near the blue line, Heath McLean with an absolute snipe. Immediately shot it, no hesitation. A long distance goal for the senior, and it's 3-0. McLean with his seventh goal of the year to put TA up 3-0. Well, bounces off the boards. That's really nobody's, Marshwood, not much they're gonna do about that there, right off the faceoff. That's just a really good shot from Heath McLean. And here's Alonzo now with it. Alonzo going back to Duhane. Duhane is taken away, here's a chance for Aiden Lockhart. Lockhart trying to toe drag, but Heath McLean stood his ground, and Kraus just watched it go right behind him. Now in front of Lockhart, and the rebound. Great pass out in front to Lockhart, who was waiting for it. And Marshwood with a quick response. Aiden Lockhart scores. They make it a little bit interesting. And Lockhart, who has been one of their better players over recent stretches here, got on the board a lot. Finds a nice pass right in front of Porter Kraus. And got to feel a little bit bad. Ruined his shutout there. He does give up a goal here with 5.12 to go, but still a great night. Just a, break down, yeah, just a breakdown on defense there. Yeah. It's a great pass as well in front to Lockhart, who was waiting for it. Defense needs to be a little bit more disciplined here as Marshwood is now trying to swing momentum back their way. There have been some defensive breakdowns for TA in this game, but it's been kind of – Porter Krause has kind of made you forget about those because how good he's been stopping these pucks. But the defense hasn't been as good as they'd like to be today. Here's Wentworth. Hubbard kicks it out of the zone. <laughs> he couldn't use his stick because Wentworth had pulled it behind him. That's the type of plays you make when you're a senior captain. Those heads up plays to kick it out of the zone. As Florent has it now. Four and a half minutes to go. Pacor is the first one there, but it'll be an icing call. You were wrong, Cole. There's another icing. Time of mobile ice cream card icing. 
435 will go back into TA zone. Just a tough goal to give up there as Aiden Lockhart puts Marshall on the board. It's 3-1 now. Here is Chase Turcott. Won the faceoff, but Lasser comes out with it, kept in the zone. Here's LaFontaine. They're going to call a hand pass. So it'll come out of the zone and now go back into Marshwood's zone for the faceoff. Lasser and Turcotte will go at it again. Lasser won most of his faceoffs today. This time he does not, and quickly out of the zone comes Benjamin Thing. Benjamin Thing, good move, but Florent puts the pressure on. Turcotte back into the zone and in behind. Waiting for it was Lockhart, who was the only goal for Marshall today. Here's Fontaine. Fontaine behind the net, puts it in front, and that was just wide as Thing was waiting for it. Here's Lockhart. Lockhart, a couple of moves, and TA's defense steps right to it. Hubbard going. And on the boards with Caden Fontaine as Lasser takes it out. Off the boards, a little too short off the board. The bank pass to himself. Turcotte, same thing happened there. Just couldn't get enough power off the board, so it sits in behind, but Marshall takes it out now. McLean dumps it in the zone, no icing. And now Jake Skillings is there to go after it. This one will go back to Brady Corson in front of Porter Krause. Three and a half minutes to go. Marshall's going to need a goal right now if they want to stay in this game. Corson clears it back out to the red line where it was Benjamin Thing waiting for it. Marshall's top two lines are staying out right now. And Bergeron shoves off the defense from Turcotte there and was a great, great shot on Wood. And Wood makes the save. That's not something you see every day, Cole, with a. Player coming in on offense can just shove the defender out of the way to take a, an open shot. But that's why Shane Bergeron is such a successful offensive player. It's because he uses his body on offense to create chances for himself as he will shift over to the inside of the dot. Alonzo sent, sent out of the faceoff circle. Marcotte can't win it. It's in his skate, though. And Marcotte's still going at it. He has had a great game, especially with that early goal. Keith McLean's off the skein out of the zone. Alonzo will go back. Smart idea. Back to Corson. Corson now. And Bergeron tips it. And it didn't touch the roof. It was close. It didn't touch the roof, so we'll keep playing. Fuller, it's past his stick. And McLean will watch it go back. No icing. McLean off the boards. Past Bergeron. And now this one back to Fuller. Marcotte takes it away. Here's Alonzo now with a chance at a good shot. It got blocked. It's still sitting there. Cam Sear with a chance now. And it's taken away by Marshwood. Marshwood trying to enter the offensive zone. Here's a chance now for number 21. That was Andrew Brainy. They sent aside Porter Krause with good defensive pressure. Here's another shot. The rebound. It's Ooh. wide. A big chance there for Joshua Sawyer. They can't finish. And with 2.10 to go. Well, the stoppage of play. Looks like the goal came out of its pegs. But they couldn't go down without an offensive fight, and they gave one right there. But T.A. bends, but they don't break. And what it remains 3-1. to one. What a great opportunity there for the Marshwood Nighthawks. Sawyer on the doorstep with a great chance at a rebound, and not sure if that was a defender stick that got in there, or if maybe that was Porter Krause standing strong on the post. Whatever it did, it knocked the goal off its pegs, so they had to reset it now, a face-off. In front of Kraus, 3-1 to one, Trojans, 2-10 to go. Marshwood needs a goal here if they want to stay in the game. Face off one by Turcotte. The shot by Lockhart went right into the skate of Brady Pacora. Bodet looking to clear the zone, and he does. It'll go back to camp at the blue line. Cam Sear was right there with him. Sear is checked as the puck goes into the other corner. Bodet. Looking to retrieve. Right behind the net is Benjamin Thing. Thing gets it out to Lockhart. Lockhart dumps it in. Excuse me, that is Thomas DiMoretto. And Kraus will hold it on the post. 98 seconds, or a minute and 38. 
You have to go in this game, and you have to assume Marshall's going to have to empty their net here to look for another goal. And for the first time in this game, we see Eric Butts, who had a big goal in there in the Trojans' 2-0 win over Lewiston a couple weeks ago. Eric Butts, a feisty young player for the Trojans. You'll see a lot of him next year. Here's Lisser. Here's Jake Florent into the zone. Shot saved by Woody. He's forced to hold for a face-off with 1.21 to go in the game. If it stands the way it is, Cole, Thorne Academy will move on to play the winner of Edward Little and Bangor next Tuesday. Edward Little, the team that they played in the semifinal last year, so it'll be the same matchup. Of course, last year, TA came in as the lower seed and had to pull off an upset at the Cross Insurance Arena, but this year, if Edward Little were to win, they would be the higher seed. And this year, Thorne Academy had a 5-1 to one win over Edward Little, and that was an away game. Yeah, it was a long time ago, though, so both teams have obviously changed. But I will say TA's gotten better. They have a yes. lot of new players this year from different schools. It's taken them um, some time to get integrated into the system, but they're fully together as a team now. I know guys like Jake Florent and Porter Krause are new to the team, and they've made some big contributions this year. And the biggest thing for the Trojans as Fuller tried to enter the zone is that they now have all these players now have a, a playoff game under their belt, they're, exactly. a, they're a little bit more composed. They're going to be a little bit more collected in the next playoff game because they know what it's like to play in an atmosphere like this. It's a good save off the pad by Hubbard, and Hubbard is checked hard by Fuller. Just threw him after the play. And now with 40 seconds, that's just about going to do it here. Spike goes around the boards. Marshall will keep their goalie in. Here's Florent. Florent takes it out of the zone. Florent will throw it in behind. Baudet is there. Baudet throws another check. Here's Wentworth with 14 seconds. It's offside. And we'll have a faceoff with 12.6 seconds to go. Marshwood fans starting to leave here. Emptying the barn. They packed the barn. Great crowd tonight. And the fan section waves them goodbye. TA will move on to the semifinals. We'll wait the, net, the extra 12 and a point six seconds as Baudet will dump it past the red line. Six seconds to go. And here we go. Thorne Academy is moving on to the semifinals. Oh, there's a late goal. <laughs> wow. Way to ruin the party. The Guess it's going to be a 3 to 2 score. We don't know if we'll count it, but anyway, they're still they're moving on anyway. Are they going to count it? That, that's a question. You're right. They are going to count it. So it's 3 2. Wow. Late goal doesn't by Marshwood. Matter. And at this point, it doesn't matter. Thorne County moves on to the semifinals to play the winner of Edward Little and Bangor. Porter Krause, a fantastic performance. In the 3-2 victory, let's be honest, really a 3-1 victory. Yeah. Just a, that will just might have to review that last one. Yeah. No video review. We learned that in the basketball. We did this definitely. past weekend. There's no oh, yeah. review in high school sports. But just a great game overall, Cole. I mean, Porter Krause with a couple of fantastic saves, and then some great goals from Marcotte, Pecora, and McLean, especially Pecora and McLean's goals in the third to extend their lead. And overall, just a fantastic performance to give them some momentum, to give them some energy as they go next week in the semifinals in the Cross Insurance Arena, which I will say is a bigger uh, set of ice than it is here. And that can actually, that can, that can be a detriment, but it, all, it can also be something positive for the Trojans. With more space, you can do more on offense, but with more ice, it's harder to, to play a full game. So we'll see how TA is affected by that. Any last thoughts, Cole? Great win over a Marshwood team that definitely packed a punch tonight. Just a lot of physicality on their side. But TA came out, they scored that first goal in the first quarter. Jake Marcotte with an excellent shot. That really set the tone for the night. And then Brady Pecora and Heath McLean both with goals. Just a really complete team win tonight. And Porter Krause was excellent. He's going to need to keep being as good as he can be if this team wants to win a state championship, which they can, but they got to take it one game at a time as they will go into the Cross Insurance Arena now and look to keep it rolling and get back to a state championship for the second year in a row.
Like you said, Thorne and Cameron looking for that state championship. That's going to do it here from Biddeford Ice Arena on TA TV. I'm Zach Tarenko alongside Cole Purvis and Josh Pauls for saying for one final time, TA3, Marshwood 2. Thank you all for watching, and we will see you all in the spring. Have a great night, everybody.